Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel for another video. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Warren Bennett. We've got Trev mooching around in the garden enjoying the sunshine, and why not? So we've got a putting um, tip for you today, and one of the biggest influences I see for bad putting. So let me just get set up, put the forward camera on, I'm going to show you what that is. Okay, so I've just had a swig of coffee and me glasses have got all steamed up. The joys of getting old. So thanks very much for joining me. Um, as you can see, this isn't a swing video today, putting. So we're outside, thought I'd take advantage of the sunshine for good lighting. Um, not ideal because it's not level, obviously. Um, so there's a little bit of wobble here, slightly right to left putt actually. Um, but yeah, so this is what's called a perfect practice mat, perfectpractice.golf. What I did, I bought it on Amazon, I think, for about £100. You might have seen Dustin Johnson advertising it. Now, I'm not really a massive fan of putting mats that have a rise at the end, but in terms of pace, got a little collection point, as you can see here, so you don't really have to move anywhere. I've got the different distances in feet. So you've got, a, it's actually not two feet away, but because of the rise, you have to putt it like a two-footer. Four, six, eight. I guess you can go nine feet at the end here. But any sort of practice, everyone, it's absolutely superb especially during kind of non-playing times. Practice your drills. Um, yeah, there's loads of different exercises, which I'll, you know, if you want any kind of putting tips and putting videos anymore, please let me know. So the biggest influence I see, and I'm not gonna say I'm the greatest putter in the world, it's not my strength that used to be when I played on tour, um, because I wasn't very good tee to green, and I kind of had a swing change and it turned it around, but, um, so club face deviation, I see a lot of club golfers have too much club face de deviation. This putter head from where it should kind of return back to square or where you were pointing and there's too much going on. And I think there's a major influence that I see that, that has an effect on this club face. But I see a lot of people who struggle with club face deviation having too much in their putting stroke is their shoulders get too early, too open, too early. Let me show you that again. Now I've got a yellow stick. So if I put the stick relatively level from the shoulders, you can see at my address, they're kind of square. I'm not gonna say they're perfect, but let's say hopefully you can see that from behind. Now what you're looking for, well obviously there's gonna be a slight rocking back and forth. So this, this is, both ends of this stick are gonna mirror what my shoulders are doing, up and down, up and down. Now, too many golfers I see, let's say have a decent backswing-ish, but if they have too much open, which I see too much of, and this is exaggerated for effect, if they have too much open, now the club face is gonna follow that. So you can see what the club face is doing there. If I have too much open, do this with one hand, if I have too much open, and I let the, my putter head go with it, you can see it's gonna miss a long way left. Show you that again. So normal backswing, but then open, you can see my putter has followed that, and it's going too far left and too closed. Now, after a period of time, your brain's gonna be very clever and realize it doesn't wanna miss left. So if you carry on doing the open club, open shoulders, guess what you're gonna to have to do now to correct it? Now, I'm not gonna say, you can see there, I've held, I've held it, but I've had to open the club face on the way through. That's what's called club face deviation. So again, and you can see there, I can still putt well and still hold it, but after a period of time, I'm gonna start being a bit yippy and too wristy because what's actually happening in slow motion there is on the way through, I'm gonna now have to open my hand. So you can see from the front camera, instead of my hand staying quite neutral through the putting stroke, it's going to have to go that way. So you can see it's going to have to twist. And after a period of time, that's gonna start looking a bit edgy and feeling a bit edgy. Now, because there's no consistency of that, Eventually you're going to start missing them to the right and you're going to realize why so then you're going to start having to kind of play around with the club face too much with your wrists and that's where the snowball of problems start. Whatever happens up top has a massive effect of what happens down below. So take this out onto the golf course next time everyone. What you're looking for, you're looking for your shoulder, I'd rather your shoulder, left shoulder up and your right shoulder down instead of the other way around. You can see how open I am, exaggerated, but it's to show you that exaggeration. 
and how much my wrist wants to close and wrap over. So I'm going to have to do something like I just explained. So I'd rather you the other way. So your shoulder goes down, you can see. So now, because of my shoulders down, my hands can stay nice and passive. And so the club face, as you can see there, stays nice and square. No club face deviation. I'm not talking about stroke length. I'm not talking about um, how hard you're hitting this. This is all about trying to control your top half so it controls the bottom half. So you have to do less. Because I think if you make a change, you might have to make a kind of a slight adjustment because if you're used to your hands, remember the golfer who has open shoulders and then has to open their hand to compensate? If you have now a good shoulder motion, rock, but you've still got the open right hand, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna start missing it to the right. So you're gonna probably have to now, if that happens, if you have a consistent miss it to the right and you feel like you're just about snuck in the door. Okay, so good shoulder tilt, but then you have this still this old opening of your hand you're going to have to change and give that give the right hand a little feeling of staying neutral so what i would recommend is making good shoulder tilt feel your i feel my right shoulder going down more than my left going up but that's personal but then hold your finish hold and see where the club face is pointing pretty square get that too hard to go through the break it's a really good exercise to really feel like you're kind of getting lower into your right side here rather you go low here than that way so if you haven't got a stick you can use your your club here cross over stick them on your shoulders relatively level and straight and then you're going to feel like this little rocking you see maybe from the right hand from the front camera you can see my head just kind of rocking behind because my shoulders going down quite aggressively it's pulling my head backwards i don't mind that you'd rather it go that way so if you've got a nasty little kind of six eight four footer really feel your shoulders going down it really stays behind the ball makes you stay behind it instead of going oh where is it gone so under pressure feel the more tilt under pressure nice light grip remember you don't want to grip it any more than maybe three or four out of ten just hold it just enough so it doesn't kind of deviate out your hands drop down okay so under pressure remember what you want is less moving parts especially in putting chipping's the same but it's got a different action especially with putting because the closer we get to the hole the more kind of nerve-wracking it gets doesn't it and like Harold Swash used to say I always remember him saying I don't know if it was in a magazine or I heard him say that every putt is a straight putt and when you think about that it doesn't matter where you're aiming the, the, it could be two balls outside the hole for a left to right or right to left but it's still a straight putt because you're still starting it on your line. So all you now have to influence is where it starts. And what you're looking for is consistency. You're looking for that ball to come off the face consistent every time. And this video and this tip is all about making it come back square with less deviation. So any questions, I'd love to hear from you. I've actually just moved house. so. I've got some more time now to um, reply to everyone. So I'm gonna start that process and hopefully by the time you see this video, I will reply to you. If not, I will get back to you as soon as I can um, and let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear any putting tips that you have. And from myself and Trev, who's sunning himself in the garden there, um, we'll see you on the next one. Probably about a swing next time, maybe do some pitching and chipping. Um, but until then, have a great golfing week, everyone. Stay healthy and I'll see you on the next one. Cheerio.